I have this hero and I want these two instances to animate right when the page loads. So to do this, we're going to break it down into two simple steps. We're going to add an animation group and we're going to set a duration on whatever animation we choose. Before we get started, make sure you watch the animations 101 video because it's going to cover some stuff I'm going to skip in this video. But let's get started by first adding an animation group. This is the foundation of all scroll driven animations in Web Studio, and it works by animating each of its child contents. So we're going to drag each child we want animated into it. Now let's head up to the animation group, define a new animation, and let's do maybe parallax in. Parallax in is just basically a slide up animation. By default, it only happens when it's scrolled into view, but it's already in view, so we don't see anything. So we need to change the duration by opening up the animation and setting the duration. How long do we want this animation to take? Let's do one second. Uh, let's do two seconds to make it very noticeable. Now we can see too that the range end is grayed out here because instead of defining where it's going to start and where it's going to end, we only define where it starts and the duration is going to figure out when it ends, not where it's at within the viewport. So let's back out of here and preview. And now we can see our two second animation happening. And we could add more to this if we want. So we've got this two seconds. I also want opacity. Uh, I want it to fade in. So I'm going to set opacity to zero. And now we can see it fade in. And 100 pixels is a little bit silly. Let's just make it 10 pixels to have it more subtle and change the duration to something that is going to look better, like 500 milliseconds. Now it's going to animate in by fading in and translating in. So you can use duration on the very first, the hero section or anywhere else on the site. And it'll work by starting the animation based on what's defining the range start and end it based on the duration. So if this was lower on the page and it were to scroll into view, it's going to kickstart that animation and play for the duration and end. In the builder, we're going to be able to see this happen multiple times because uh, it'll help us with debugging. But on the live site, it's only going to play that first time that it enters view. And that's how you use duration to animate elements into view, not by where they're at in the viewport or where they're ending in the viewport, but by a specified time. Well, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.